Now you often hear me during this video series saying, I have no idea why I called this design this, but this design really does make me think about space for some reason. Not sure why, but I'm going with it. Hi, I'm Tom, I am the Colorblind Quilter, and you are watching This Is How You Quote It, design number 10, and we are making this lovely space design. When I look at the design, for some reason it makes me think of the expanse of space, or I'm perhaps picturing something from a sci-fi film that makes me think of that, but that's, I don't know why, that just comes to mind when I look at this design. I love the way that these lines intersect and they add such great texture to a quilt and it, I think it's really fun for a quilt, particularly wall hangings where you want to maybe emphasize a central point of the quilt. So this is a fun one to do and I hope you're going to enjoy it. And actually this is dead easy to sew. It takes very little prep, very little effort, but you get this great looking design by the time you're finished. Now I did mention in design number nine, Chevron to Hoy, that I'm doing things a little differently now in this video series. Rather than filming voiceovers after I've filmed prep and sewing steps, I am recording whilst I'm doing the prep and filming of the sewing so that you can get real time kind of feedback and thoughts from me as I'm doing it. And I really hope that you find that helpful and that you get even more from this video series. Now, snuggle and cuddle rating time. So on the difficulty rating, I think that this is pretty simple and a confident beginner can do this. So I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 because it's just still straight lines. For the snuggle rating for this particular setup that I've done, this is fairly, it, it's fairly, it's kind of medium dense, I would say. So we'll give this a 3 out of 5, middle of the ground. You could make this fluffier by doing the lines further apart, or you can make it denser by putting the lines closer. You will always get a little dense bit here though at the top where all these lines intersect. So that is something to watch out for. So let's get straight into the preparation steps. Okay, so for space, this is dead simple. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mark right in the middle of the top of the square. Okay, so that's the center of my block. So that line's important, we'll come back to that. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do four lines two inches apart across the square. So we're gonna turn it this way, and this works the same as you've seen me do in many other videos. You're gonna line up the two inch line with the edge, top and bottom of the ruler. You can do your ruler like this if you prefer, but I actually like it that way because it gives me something to keep the pencil straight as I go off the edges, okay? Pressure pushing down from above to keep the ruler in place. Don't need to be white knuckles, it's not that kind of pressure, but it's you don't want to push the ruler that way or that way or this way. So straight down pressure through your fingertips. If you don't have great grip for your fingertips, you can get something to put on it like a, a can or a weight or something to hold it in place, but just use your fingertips if you can. I like to start somewhere away from the edge, because if you try and draw the edge, it pulls the fabric down like this. You find that kind of effect happens. So I like to start somewhere in the middle and draw up towards that edge and then down. Now this is a clover white marking pen in fine. It's a bit like a Polaroid pictures. When you draw the line, it takes a minute or two before it fully appears. So don't worry if you can't see my line straight away because they often take a couple of minutes before the camera is able to pick them up. Now I've set the ruler across to the four inch line, keeping the top and the bottom straight, making sure also the line that we just drew is on that two inch line. Again, applying pressure evenly across the ruler, starting somewhere in the middle, up and down. Okay, next one, slide. This is a six inch wide ruler, so the edge of the ruler is now on the edge of the block. These lines are fully along the top and bottom of the block. Two inch and four inch marks on the ruler are lining up with the two lines we just drew. There we are. Last one. Now you can either flip it about and you can line up the two inch line again and then you can draw your line, but it is more efficient to just slide your ruler over and line edge up with the first line on the left. All these four and two inch lines line up with the lines that you've drawn, top and bottom line up. Make sure that it's straight, pressure from your hand, and then we're done. Now, next thing you need to do is on the bottom edge, so the opposite side from that check mark, we just want to put little check marks every two inches across this, okay? So to do this, get your ruler. Now again, you can do this if you like with the edge flat, but I prefer doing it with the overhang because I feel that it makes it a little bit more accurate for me, but that's just me. Now to help me stay straight, because the ruler is not on the edge, this might not be enough to keep you straight 
if your square was slightly off. And you can kind of eyeball this here, but a much more accurate way to do this is to get the lines that you've drawn that run horizontally just now. So you see like this line here and find lines on your ruler that line up with those lines and make sure that that helps you to keep the ruler straight. We're gonna apply pressure in the middle to keep the ruler in place. Find, and because, now because I'm slightly offset, I'm offset by an inch. So I need to count two inches across. So one, two, mark, one, two, mark, one, two, mark, one, two. So we've got horizontal lines. We've got check marks on the bottom or what will be the bottom of the square every two inches along. And then on the top of the square, we have a central mark right in the middle of the block. And that was marked at the five inch line. Take your block. You can start wherever you like, but I'm gonna start here. There are no angles to worry about. You just need to match point to point. That's all you gotta do. No angles required. Now, be careful because we're drawing on an edge and an edge. The ruler will potentially slip if you don't have the right pressure. So you want to make sure you've got pressure at this edge and enough pressure on this edge to keep the ruler from moving. Again, it's not about having white knuckles. It's just about making sure that ruler doesn't slip as the pencil comes because nothing worse than going like that and then suddenly your lines all squint. So starting in the middle, up towards that line, keeping pressure so the fabric doesn't move. First one's done. Next line, same idea. Just line it up, no angles to think about. Pressure again, here and here, because we're still on the edges of this block. Okay, and you see how this keeps this nice and straight because there's the ruler, there's no going off. I really like that tip. Again, here and there, lined up and draw your line. And then finally, from here to the last one, make sure you've got a bit of overhang. If you have smaller hands, what I would suggest you do is if you're starting at the top, place the pressure on the top of the ruler and draw up the way like so, and then draw down as far as you feel you've got pressure. So I feel I've got pressure to about here. So draw down to there and then I'm going to crab walk my hands down and then finish the line. Okay, so if you feel you have small hands, just do this kind of movement like a crab pivoting on your thumb and that will stop the ruler from moving and just keep your pencil or pen right where you stop it and that will keep the line straight see very good last one to do this is the longest line to draw so just take your time here make sure you've got overhang bottom and top so starting in the middle where i've got plenty of pressure up towards the center check mark coming down i'm gonna walk my hand down i did take my pencil away i'm sorry that was naughty but it was just so that you could still see on camera. Okay, there we are. Now, we're going to continue this, but this time we're going to use the check marks that we drew on the bottom. Now, just work your way up. These ones are the harder ones because they are the longest because they are the width of the block. You have to be careful not to press really hard because you will drag on the fabric and distort it, okay? Because you are kind of drawing on the bias here. What you might find is that as you draw more and more lines, you get a big white blob up here. Don't worry, that's fine. When we get to the sewing steps, we're going to talk about how we can minimize the bulk. Sometimes your ruler will shift as you are about to draw, as you lift your hand to get ready. So just double check that it's not shifted like mine just did there. And then we want our final line. And then we go. Okay. And then we just need to repeat for these four lines here and we are done. When you get to your final couple of lines, you may find that the checkpoint feels like it's a bit difficult to see. It's right in here because we, it's a bit smudged from all these lines. So just aim for the middle of the lines. This is going to get hidden when you bind it, so no one need to worry. So prep is easy. It doesn't take that long. Just take some planning and you might not even need to mark your lines like I've done. If you were doing this in a quote, you could just use big strips of masking tape and that would really save you some time. Let's show you how to sew this now. And there are ways to do this without cutting your thread to save threads. So let's do it. For this design, we are going to try and do this without cutting threads as much as possible. So I'm thinking that I'm going to sew from the center down to here, then along and then back up. So we're going to try that once to see how it works. So I'm lining up where I want to start, which is on the in the middle of that line. I'm working my way along, taking it slowly because I am on an 
the edge of the block is just right here. I don't want to snag on the walking foot. And I'm just sewing along lines, keeping it stable as I go. As I reach the point where I'm going to want to pivot, I'm going to slow down, take a stitch at a time until I'm where I want to be, which is right there. And then I'm going to pivot and sew my straight line now. I like to keep my thumb and fingers in a triangle shape, sort of around the walking foot. And then as my fingers get to the walking foot, I just adjust it. Never push my thumbs past the walking foot because then I start to strain my shoulders as I try to push it through. He says, he just pushes his thumbs past the walking foot. Again, as I get to where I want to be here, I'm going to slow down, taking a stitch at a time. Perfect. Then I'm going to pivot and then continue sewing once I'm happy that my needle is in the place that I'm going. Another good tip as well is a lot of people will watch the needle where it's stitching and by the time you're looking at where it's stitching, it's already too late to correct anything. The best thing to do is to look further ahead of the needle. So maybe perhaps in between this space here, watch the line there and then you can adjust and compensate if you've gone wonky or you're wavering off the line. Because as I say, by the time you get to the needle, it's too late to change it. Now I'm taking my time here because I want to meet up with the line where I started. There we are. Now I am going to sew this next line down here. So I'm just going to pivot, line up and sew down. Again, when I get to the edge, slow down, take it a stitch at a time until we're happy where, where we want to be. I think that's good enough. Pivot. And then continue along the straight edge. Just gently moving my brown. This time I actually have sewn off the edge. That's okay, so I'm just going to bump the block up against the needle, lining it up in the direction I want to sew and then continue. Any little snags or thread balls are going to be hidden in the binding, so you won't see those. And you also aren't going to see this bit at the top here, because this is going to end up with quite a few threads on it. So it doesn't, don't worry necessarily if the point is not perfect at the top, it will be hidden, it's okay. Same with the sides, if the points are not perfect, don't worry, they're going to be hidden. We're just going to line up next line and just keep sewing. Just tell you about my sewing machine setup. I am using a straight stitch plate on my sewing machine. I'm using my walking foot as well because we are quilting and this keeps it feeding evenly through the machine. And I am using a 50 weight Gutterman thread in white. I'm using white deliberately because it shows up on the navy fabric so that it's easy for you to see what I'm sewing. But I may want to sew this in a, a matching colour if I wanted texture rather than a stitch that was really visible. And as I say, my stitch length is set to two and a half and I am wearing quilting gloves just to help guide and move this about because there's a little bit of pivoting required. But you can see I'm on like my what is this third set of lines and I haven't had to break thread. You could of course do this sewing all these lines, cutting your threads and then come back and sew these lines or any combination that you like with, a, with cutting your threads. If that's what makes you feel more comfortable when you do this, please do feel free to sew that way. This is just how I'm doing it and just my suggestion for efficiency. Another little tip is that these, these lines are thicker than my needle, even with a fine tipped pen, the lines are thicker. So I am aiming or trying to keep my needles in the middle of the drawn line as much as I can. It's not something that I'm going to lose sleep about because the lines will be erased. As we get to the edge, just slow down, stitch at a time. I think I've just caught the batting, so we're still in the fabric. Yep. As you're sewing as well, just take a minute to check your posture. I find I often am hunching my shoulders up when I'm 
quilting without realizing until I get a sore shoulder and a sore back quite quickly. So try and relax your posture and keep an eye on it. And particularly don't push your hands too far away from your body because that will encourage you to hunch your shoulders and roll them forward. Now I think this might be the last set of lines we can sew without cutting thread, but let's see what it's like when we get to the top. You know, I think we're going to be able to get one more line and then we might have to cut threads. Yeah, we're going to get one more line. Yeah, so we're going to have to cut threads here, but I'm going to show you a little cheat method, if you like. So I am going to sew as close to the edge as I can get. And then I'm going to pivot. Oops, I've gone off the edge, but that's okay. So I'm going to sew just right along the edge of the block to the next line. This is going to be hidden in my binding, so you don't need to worry about it if it's messy. And then I'm going to get to this line and then I'm going to pivot and then I'm going to sew up the way this time now. I'm going to pivot and then sew down the next line. Again, I've reached the edge. I'm just going to pivot. I'm going to sew along the edge and then turn and flip up. Last one. This one's going to be slightly trickier because it's right in the corner. So we're going to sew to the corner and we're just going to keep an eye on it because the sewing machine might want to chew this up. No, we're going to be okay. Just be careful because the point is really wanting to bunch up here. Yep, yeah, see, I thought that was going to happen. So I'm just going to back stitch. Right, so what happened was the fabric didn't catch the corner. The sewing machine didn't catch the corner. It pushed the top layer of fabric away and started stitching underneath it. So I've just back stitched to the edge and then I'm using my stiletto to hold this in place as I take a stitch. There we go. And now it's caught it. The corner will look a little messy, but we don't need to worry because what will happen is that will be hidden by our binding. And so when you're doing the corners, you may like to consider that that will be an issue on this little block. So you may prefer to cut threads and start that as a new line. On a big quilt though, with overhang of backing and batting, that wouldn't be an issue because you would be sewing onto the backing and batting first. And then you could make sure that the corner was flat. And this time I'm just gonna sew straight off the edge. There we are. As you can see, this is a little bulky here because all the lines are running through it. So don't worry about that too much, that's okay, because that's going to be hidden by the binding there. You know, I keep saying that, but you can see it doesn't look too messy on the back, it's quite good. And, but there we are, that was dead easy, and that was how to do that without cutting any threads at all. So that's the sewing steps, no problem at all, and you can actually do it as well without cutting your thread, so that will save you some thread. Now I'll talk about things that you might want to watch out for. If you are confident in sewing your line, you could just mark your horizontal lines and then you could eyeball it to the top center point. Or you could use masking tape, like I said, and just kind of roughly line it up and then sew along the edge of the tape. Just depends how confident you are and how comfortable you feel doing that. When it comes to doing this on a real quilt, I mentioned about the center point. Now, because this is just a little sample and it's to the edge, there is a little bit of kind of denseness here where all the lines meet. On a real quilt, you would have backing and batting that hangs beyond the edge of your quilt top. So I would very definitely suggest sewing way off the edge and that will push the bulk of the lines that meet off the edge of your quilt. And so you won't end up with a big dense spot at the top. I would have fun with this one as well. Decorative stitches, you know, zigzags, serpentine lines, they would look really cool on this and give a kind of wavy feel, that would be very nice. Uh, or variegated thread would also work very nicely on this one. If you were doing this with a matching thread to your background, so if I had stitched this with a navy thread, it would have just added a really nice texture through it because you wouldn't have seen the stitches. So picking your colour of thread to either really accent and pop or picking a thread to just blend in and add texture will create a different feel for this project. But generally you cannot go wrong with this design. It is pretty forgiving and will look good on almost any kind of quilt. Now speaking of any kind of quilt, it's time to look at some examples that you can do using this design. Okay, up is our first trusty favourite carpenter star design. So I really like this because 
A, I like how, and if you look on screen, you can hopefully see my mouse, you can follow along what I'm talking about. But I like how I was able to use my horizontal lines to divide the quilt up into sections. And I think that's really nice. And then secondly, I like also how the lines running diagonally across also highlight across points or across various parts of the quilt. But secondly, I kind of feel like this is starlight radiating down on the carpenter star. So I feel like that's quite a clever, unintentional little design feature. Now you could make this more dense, you could make this less dense. It depends on the size of your quilt and how far apart you can put the lines depending on the batting that you are using. But I do quite like this. And again, it does that thing that I quite create some secondary patterns. So depending on where you look, how the lines are intersecting and cutting things up, it creates pinwheels or secondary patterns that you can see. And I like this because I think this is probably a design that you might not consider for a carpenter's star, but I actually think that it works very nicely indeed. Second pattern is our winding ways. So this is curved piecing. So the straight lines really do accent the curved piecing. For a start, I have used the horizontal lines to chop the blocks up and create square feeling-ish. And then again, the straight lines then cut through and intersect, create different patterns. So everywhere you look, there's a little bit of a different thing that you see, and it almost starts to look like a grid on an angle through this one. And again, it's also got that kind of starlight, sunlight feel. I could imagine that these are like flowers, you know, like a flower bed, and this is the sun, these, these lights or lines are the sunlight streaming down onto the flowers. So I quite like the symbolism of that in this quote and I think it's very nice. And again, it was really easy to, to figure out the spacing because you just naturally follow, you know, in between blocks through the middle of blocks. And it's very intuitive to divide this up. Now, this is probably my favorite in this design, and I'm gonna tell you why. So the circle quilt already feels very modern, but this design, it's making the quilt feel very 3D, very three-dimensional, kind of jumping off the fabric. It kind of feels like these dots are either moving at high speed and there's are lines that are kind of zooming behind them, you know, kind of like Star Trek with the warp ship when they go to warp and there's all the lines of the stars zooming past. It either feels like that to me, or it feels like a black hole behind them sucking them in again this is the space theme that comes to mind and i'm not sure why but i really enjoy this it creates a real another feeling to the quote it like it takes what could be a flat quote and lifts it up but because it lifts it up it then makes it feel very modern on top of that and so i really like the double duty here that the design is doing and you know if i could find time i would convince myself to make one of these but i really like this you could be a bit more particular with your spacing if you like you could have your horizontal lines going through the top middle and bottom of the circles to divide it up if you want symmetry i wasn't too bothered about symmetry here i was more about the 3d effect that i was going for but i really like this very very pleasing on the eye this one and then finally I wanted to show you what would happen if you combined this design. So this is just a simple real fence with sashing. And what I've done is I've cut the quilt into two rectangles and done one top and one bottom. Everything from the top half of the quilt radiates to the center of the quilt. And there's a horizontal line that runs across the quilt. Everything from the bottom half radiates up towards that center line. And so it creates a really almost like it feels like a diamond. Like if you're looking at a diamond side on, it kind of creates that diamond feel. And I really like this because I feel that it really adds to the long columns of the real fence blocks. Now this is actually really easy to do. When it comes to doing this, what I would first do is I would quilt that line through the middle of the very center of the quilt horizontally. Then I would go along it at my determined spacing and I would put my check marks on it. And I would use that as a guide from the top of the quilt to the middle of the quilt and from the bottom of the quilt to the middle of the quilt. And that will Give you the spacing that you're looking for and then you draw and do all your other lines as the rest of the quilt design goes and you probably want to do one right down the middle of the quilt just to make sure everything is nice and secure as well so that you don't end up with a big gap in the middle so just double check this one with your batting see how far apart you can put your lines so that you don't end up with any bearding going on i have just realized that i've missed one of the the lines off the design. I must have got carried away with how exciting it was and forgot to put it in, but I just wanted to show you what this would look like. And actually, if you were to take a square version of a quote and do this on the sides, it would create this kind of look across and that would look very cool as well. So it's a very versatile design that you can do lots of things with, that you can play with the placement, you can play with how many times you put it on the quote. I mean, you could do this on a square quilt on each of the sides of the quilt and it would create a really beautiful radiant effect across the quilt. And that would be very nice looking and create lots of texture and lots of, of 
things for your eyes to catch as it goes across the quilt. So I hope you like those designs. I really like them, especially the last two. Like all of these designs, I want to make all of these quilts, you know, and there's just not enough hours in the day, but I hope you enjoy it and I hope that it gave you some inspiration for your quilts. So that was our space design, which really adds another dimension to our quilting projects. Bad dad joke. In our next design, design number 11, we're looking at a diamond grid and we have not one, but two variations of it for you. I will be showing you a very dense version that will look lovely on wall hangings or table runners. And I'll be showing you a fluffier version if you want a big soft fluffy quilt. And I promise you, there are no angle lines involved on any rulers. Now don't forget, we're doing all this to make a flip book of designs so that when you get to your pattern and it says quilt is desired, Instead of going, oh, we can pick up our flick book and we can flick through it and we can find a design and we can see a real example of what it will look like. So that's what we're working towards and I hope you're following along with us. There is also a book that accompanies this series and it will be coming out later this year. And if you want more information and to get notified about it when pre-orders open, there's a link in the description to sign up to the mailing list. If you are sewing along, I would love for you to tag me using the hashtag this is how you quote it and also tag me the colorblind quilter so that I can follow all your wonderful work and I can share them as well. And finally, if this video is helpful and you're enjoying this series, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and why not subscribe and click the bell so you're notified when that lovely diamond grid design comes out. So have fun sewing your space designs. I really like it and I hope you enjoy it too. So take care and I will see you next time.